Camel Seltzer, made by the Emerson Drug Company, invites you through the creaking door for tonight's inner sanctum mystery, titled Beneficiary Death, written by Ed Adamson and Bob Smith. Bromo Seltzer reminds you to... Good evening, friends of the creaking door. This is your host to welcome you once again into the inner sanctum. Come in, come on in. Oh, I'm tired. Just finished my spring gardening, planted a couple of dozen of bulb heads. But I'm sure they won't be content to stay in their new loams. <laughs> That's how things are here behind the creaking door. Whatever goes down must come up at night. <laughs> oh, by the way, folks, I want you to meet our laughing ghost. We call him Silly Willie because it's easy to tickle his fantasy. But Willie's not really so silly when it comes to getting rid of his mate. The first one left him because he started each day by beating her over the head with a club. Well, naturally, she got sick and tired of such treatment. But his second wife, a brunette, had a much more interesting conclusion. Willie buried her head in the sand at the ocean front. Now she's a beached blonde. <laughs> Horror has many sides. It can make itself felt in an almost hidden, quiet sort of way. Just as it did that rainy Monday morning that Sam and Helen Braden were at breakfast in their small suburban home. The Braden sat in the kitchen nook near the window, the same as they'd done for 20 years. But still... This morning, things were not quite the same. Sam, you've just been sitting there staring out the window. You haven't touched your breakfast. I'm not hungry, Helen. You didn't sleep last night, did you? A little, on and off. You're just worrying yourself sick over nothing. Now, business is bound to get better. Oh, there's no use kidding you any longer. The store is on its last legs. The bank refused me the loan. Oh. Said I was a bad risk. Then you don't need the bank's money. You can still raise some yourself. Yes. How? Your insurance. Yes. I begged and borrowed everything up to my teeth, but I won't touch that insurance. That's for you, Helen, Sam, in case... Sam, please, listen to me. No, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Getting late. I'm starting for town. Sam, wait. Yes? I wish you'd take the train instead of the car. Why? Well... Weather's so awful. Look at the way the rain's coming down. I drove into town in lots worse weather than this. I know, but... But what? But feeling the way you do, Sam, I, I, I wish you wouldn't drive. Oh, I'm all right, Helen. I'll see you this evening. Sam, please take the train. I told you I'm all right. I, I had an awful dream last night. I saw you driving the car along the turnpike, and then suddenly the car crashed, and you were... Killed? Yes. Well, that's not such an awful dream at all. Why, Sam? Well, it isn't. When you consider my insurance, I'm really worth more to you dead than alive. Hello? Mrs. Brayton? Hmm? Mrs. Samuel Brayton? Yes? This is Sergeant Land of the Merrick Police. The police? The, it's about my husband. Yes, his car was in a crack-up an hour ago on the turnpike. Was he hurt badly? I'm sorry to tell you, Mrs. Braden, but he's dead. Oh. Mrs. Braden? Mrs. Braden? Yes? It's only a formality, but uh, you'll have to come down to the county morgue personally to claim the body. Did you hear me? Yes, I heard you. Helen, why are you crying? Sam, why did you do it? 
I didn't want the insurance money. I wanted you to come back. But I have come back. Please told me you were killed in the auto crash. Just the way I dreamed it. I saw your face. Just the way it is now. Covered with blood. Sam, I only wanted you to live. Why are you talking that way, Helen? I am alive. No. Here, touch me. Sam, don't. You mustn't be afraid. Touch me. Sam, please. Ah. Feel my hand. It isn't, it isn't cold. You're not dead. You're alive. But your face in that, that call just now. There was an accident. The car was coming toward me. I swerved to get out of the way, and then everything went black, and the next thing I knew, I was standing at the front door outside. But the police found your body in the wreck. They, they asked me to come down to the morgue and claim it. My body? They said you were there, dead. The hitchhiker. Hitchhiker? Just before I got onto the turnpike, I picked up a tramp. I was giving him a lift into town. Wait. What is it? My my wallet. It's not in my pocket. It must have fallen out in the crash. Then that's why they thought it was you. Yes. Helen, what are you going to do? Call the American police and tell them you're alive. Put that phone down. But they should know. Put it down. <laughs> I'm not alive. What? To all intents and purposes, that's my body down at the morgue. Don't understand. This is our chance, Helen. Don't you see? What are you trying to say? It's very plain and simple. My $25,000 life insurance. Now, do you understand? Sam, we can't do a thing like that. And not for just $25,000. Accidental death. The double indemnity clause. $50,000. Sam, please. $50,000. I told you at breakfast time, worth more dead than alive. $50,000. After you collect, we can go away. For the first time, we can really live. We won't have to worry about pennies anymore. Darling, we don't want money that way. All you have to do is go down to the morgue at Merrick. Sam, we can't do it. Of course we can. They'll find us out. The tramp I picked up told me he was homeless. No family. It's all so perfect. Once you claim my body, no one will ever find out. <laughs> Now, Mrs. Braden, just uh, one more thing to be filled out on this form. Uh, where do you want your husband's body sent? Uh, uh, to, to the Winston Funeral Home in Crestview. Winston Funeral Home, Crestview. Now, come with me, please. Sergeant Lando, where, where are we going? To that room at the end of the hall. That's where the bodies are kept. Do I have to go? Well, I'm sorry, but that's the law. You know it's my husband, don't you? Sure. But the next of kin has to make identification. Oh, Sergeant Lando. It'll only take a second. Here we are. Yes, Sergeant. That, that, that's my husband. Mrs. Braden, how many years were you married? Twenty. Why do you ask? Well, it uh, just hit me as peculiar, but it may be because you're upset by your loss. I, I don't understand. The body you just identified has been here in the morgue for three days. What? Your husband's body is here to your right. On this other slab. You should have been more careful. You could have ruined everything. I was so frightened, Sam. I didn't know what to do. When Sergeant Landau stopped, I, I thought that was the body. I didn't know what he looked like. Oh, well, I guess it was my fault. I should have described him to you. Anyway, you got away with it. They gave you the death certificate and they sent the body to the Winston Funeral Home. It came so near to getting caught. But luckily, you acted upset enough to save us. We may not be so lucky the next time. There won't be a next time. From here on, there won't be any trouble for us. Sam, please, let's forget about the whole thing. Are you crazy? Before it's too late. We can still save ourselves. We can say you had amnesia and just turned up. They'll believe that. And let $50,000 slip through our fingers? But we never did anything wrong in our lives. 
You know we're not the kind of people to do a thing like this. I'm at the door. All right, get hold of yourself and answer it. Who could it be? I'll, I'll hide in the closet here. Mrs. Braden? Yes? Uh, my name is Granger. I'm from the Acme Insurance Company. Sure. Uh, I'm here in regard to your husband's death. Uh, oh, C- come in, please. Thank you. I'll just be a moment. I, I don't want to bother you unnecessarily at a time like this, but before the company pays you the double indemnity benefits of your late husband's policy, you'll be required to sign these papers. Now, uh, you may mail them in if you choose, or you may sign them right now, and I'll take them back to the office with me. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll sign them now. Uh, very well. Oh, uh, by the way, Mrs. Braden. Yes, Mr. Granger. Uh, where will the services be held? The... Winston Funeral Home in Crestview. Tomorrow? Yes, at ten in the morning. I'll be there. You'll be there? I, I don't understand. To pay my respects. You see, Mrs. Braden, I knew your husband quite well some years ago when I sold him the policy. <laughs> Bromo Seltzer, famous for fast headache help, is bringing you Inner Sanctum. Bromo Seltzer, Bromo Seltzer, Bromo Seltzer, Bromo Seltzer, Bromo Seltzer, Bromo Seltzer. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? How do you do? This is your old friend Norman Brokenshire. The other day, I heard a fellow speak of the hour between five and six in the evening as the headache hour. Now, if you get a headache about this time or any time, I hope you'll remember Bromo Seltzer. For Bromo Seltzer is a friend in need when you've got a headache. It's true, neighbors. Bromo Seltzer not only quickly helps the pain of a headache, but it also soothes the upset stomach and the jittery nerves that may come with it. Yes, Bromo Seltzer gives you three-way headache help that's fast and pleasant. Now, by pleasant, I mean... Bromo Seltzer is pleasant to take, actually refreshing. Try Bromo Seltzer next time you get an ordinary headache. Try it on this guarantee. You must be satisfied or your money back. All drug stores carry Bromo Seltzer at their counters and fountains. For fast three-way headache help, ask for Bromo Seltzer, Bromo Seltzer, Bromo Seltzer, Bromo Seltzer, Bromo Seltzer. You know, personally, I feel kind of sorry for that Sam Braden. The only way he can make a decent living is by being dead. Hmm? <laughs> well, that's fate for you. Everything was going pretty well until that insurance guy Granger turned up and said he was going to pay his last respects to Sam. You see what happens when you fool around with death? Things go from bad to hers. <laughs> Well, now let's get back to our tale and the troubled Braden. Of all people for the insurance company to send out here, it had to be Granger. I told you we couldn't get away with it. Well, we're not finished yet. Granger told you that you'd probably get the check from the insurance company tomorrow. But in the meantime, he'll go to the Winston funeral home. He'll know that's not you in the casket. He'll never know. What are you doing? Something we should have done right after Granger left here earlier this evening. Here, take this phone. I've dialed the Winston Funeral Home. But what? When they answer, you tell them they changed your mind. There'll be no services tomorrow. You've just found a paper signed by your husband in which he requested that he be cremated immediately after death. They'll be suspicious. I'll write the note now. That'll cover it. Haven't they answered yet? No. No. Got to get that body out of there before tomorrow morning. Still no answer? No, not yet. We better hang up. It must be closed for the night. If we wait until tomorrow morning, it'll be too late. Then what'll we do? There's only one thing to do, Helen. We're going over to the funeral home and get that body out ourselves. <laughs> Oh, 
try the back door down at the end of this alley. We'll never get away with it. I've had the feeling all along Will that... you stop talking like that, Helen? Don't you understand it's worth any risk we take to get that 50000 But I told you I don't want the money. Wait and see. When you get your hands on it, you'll feel differently. Here's the back door. It's locked, isn't it? Well, of course. What did you expect? There's no way we can get in. Yes, there is. I'll break the glass panel and then reach in and turn the lock. Someone might hear us. You're just making things worse by talking that way. Besides, we looked out in front, didn't we? There's not a soul around. Yes, I'll need something to break the glass. What can I use? I know. Helen, give me your compact. Here. This compact should do fine. Oh, oh, oh. Sam, you cut yourself. I guess I'm not much of an expert on housebreaking. Don't you see? We can't do any of this, right? Because we're not people for a thing like this. Then we make ourselves that kind of people. We'll manage. We did so far. I'll have this door unlocked in a second. There. All right, come on, Helen. Can't I wait here? No, no, I need your help. Come on. Sam, I'm so frightened. You mustn't be. Just try to think of the money. Just try to think of all the pleasure we'll have with it. We'll never enjoy it. We'll never have a happy moment again. Please, Helen, don't say things like that. Uh, here are the caskets. I'll see what this tag says. Sarah Adams. All right, we try the next one. Samuel Braden. All right, Helen, you get down at the other end and help me lift the lid. Oh, Sam, please, I can't. I just can't. All right, I'd do it myself. <gasps> Helen, what's wrong? What is it? The coffin. There's no one in it. The coffin is empty. But, but you had the body sent here from the morgue. Yes. And this coffin tag has my name on it. What could have happened to the corpse? Where can it be? Someone came in. Footsteps. They're coming this way. I can't let anybody see me, and there's no time to get out the rear way. Wait. I know where to hide. Then what are you doing? The only safe thing. I'll hide in this coffin. But what'll I do? What'll I say? I don't know, but try to carry it off the best you can. Good evening, Mrs. Brayden. I had an idea I might find you here. Oh, you don't have to be afraid of me. I won't hurt you. Who are you? My name is Stephen Winston. You own this place. That's right. We've, we've never met. How do you know who I am? I've made a point of knowing Mrs. Brayden. As a matter of fact, I've just come from your house. I'd planned on having a talk with you about the ceremonies tomorrow. Oh, uh, by the way, don't you know it's illegal to force your way into an establishment? But I, I tried to get you on the phone, Mr. Winston. There, there was no answer. I thought perhaps your line was out of order, so I came down. I, I wanted to talk to you, too. About the ceremonies? Yes. Do you mind telling me how you got in here? Rear door was open. It's odd. I distinctly remember having bolted it. However, first I have something very interesting to show you. Mr. Winston, what are you doing? Lift up this coffin lid. No, no, don't. Why not? I, I can't, can't bear to see you. Well, that isn't the reason, is it, Mrs. Brayden? That isn't the reason at all. What, what do you mean? You've already opened this coffin. You know there's no body in it. Isn't that the reason? Yes. I thought so. You probably wonder what's happened to the body that was in it. Well, I'm happy to relieve your mind of the anxiety. I have the body down in the basement, hidden. What? Why, why did you hide my husband's body? You can drop the act, Mrs. Braden. I know that wasn't your husband's body. No. Yes, of course. I once met your husband. I rarely forget a face. The police would be very interested in your game, but uh, the police don't have to know, necessarily. 
What do you mean by that? Now look, Mrs. Brayton, I'm a businessman. The police don't have to know about this at all, providing you make it worth my while. You want money? Yes. Ten thousand dollars should seem to be a fair sum. I suggest, Mrs. Brayton, that you get in touch with your dear departed husband and tell him my terms. Ten thousand. Or jail for both of you. Sam, it's been hours. Thought you'd never get back here to the house. It became light out. I had to be careful no one saw me. Winston knows everything. It was he who took the body out of the casket. Yes, Helen, I know. I heard from inside the coffin. He wants money. We mustn't give it to him. Of course not. He'd go on blackmailing us until he got every cent of the 50,000. That's not what I mean, Sam. It's a good thing you didn't tell him I was in that coffin. (laughs) Darling, please listen to me. I've been waiting for you to come home. I I wanted you to be the one to call the police. Call the police? You've got to. If we make a clean breast of everything now, they may not be too hard on us. They're not telling the police anything. Then Winston will. No, he won't. Winston is dead. I killed him. I buried his body where it will never be found. I I had to do it, Helen. Things had gotten so that I just had to. (laughs) Helen, do you have to keep standing at the window there looking at the birds down in the garden? Why don't you talk to me? Talk? What could I say? You can find something to say to make me feel a little better about it. How can you feel better about killing a man? It isn't that I wanted to do it. I had to. You've got to understand that I never had the makings of a murderer in me. No, Sam, you didn't. Until the thought of that $50,000 made you one. Why do you keep saying that? There's nothing I can do about it now. I can't go to the police. They'll sentence me to death. You wouldn't want that, would you? No, Sam, I wouldn't want that. Well, then what can I do? I don't know. Well, there's one thing I know we've got to do, and that's move away from here where no one will know us. Maybe then we can start over again. Maybe then things will be all right between us. Maybe. Sure they will. The 50,000 will make all the difference. <laughs> What's the matter? Why are you looking at me that way? We can't take that money now. After all I've done? After what you've done. That's just the reason. You're not making sense. We couldn't get anywhere without money. We, we, we'd have to get it some way. We need a lot of money to... Helen, look. There's the mailman coming down the walk. I bet he's got the insurance company check with him now. You, you better go down and see. All right. Why did you stop, Helen? All you have to do is go down the stairs and open the door. I've made up my mind, Sam. We're not taking the money. But but you know we need it to save ourselves. Not that kind of money. Now, look, the mailman must have that check. That's why he's ringing the bell. It was sent registered. You have to sign for it. I'm not going down to get it. You are. Hurry, before he goes away. Now, go on. Don't stand. Let go of me. I'm not answering that ring. Yes, you are. You're opening that door and signing for that letter. I have to drag you down. Helen, get out the step. Helen. Helen! Helen! I I didn't mean it, darling. I didn't mean it. I didn't. I... No, you didn't. You couldn't help yourself. I understand. Sam? Yes? The money. You can't have it now. I'd have to sign the check, and I... I won't be able to. I'm glad about that. It wasn't meant for us. Never would have brought us a happy home. Helen. Helen. <laughs> Operator? Will you please get me the Merrick police? Hello? Is Sergeant Landau there? 
No, no, he won't have to call back. Message? Yes. Just tell him that Sam Braden is on his way over. Now that's what I call a significant ending. No doubt there for whom the doorbell tolls. That Sam and Helen show were bunglers. They handled a cold corpse like it was a hot potato. But before Sam went the way of all burnt flesh for the insurance murder, he was heard to say that honesty is the best policy. Well, anyway, now he's got a coffin to call his own. <laughs> Neighbors, here's a fact I'm sure you'll agree with. To help a headache one way is good. To help it two ways is better. But to help your headache three ways is best of all. And that's exactly what Bromo Seltzer does. First, Bromo Seltzer helps the headache itself, and fast. Then it soothes the upset stomach and jittery nerves that may team up with your headache. And that's not all, neighbors. Bromo Seltzer tastes good. You'll actually like sparkling, refreshing Bromo Seltzer. Convince yourself, try Bromo Seltzer the next time you get a headache. Remember, where others fail, Bromo Seltzer works. Caution, use only as directed. And, of course, if a headache persists or recurs, see your doctor. Be ready for fast headache help at all times. Get Bromo Seltzer today at any drugstore. And remember... Don't just fight a headache one or two ways. Fight headache three ways. Bromus out to 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 Well, it's time to close that creaking door on tonight's inner sanctum which featured Everett Sloan as Sam and Barbara Weeks as Helen. The music was by Lou White, and the entire production was directed by Hyman Brown. Tonight, friends, we close the creaking door for several weeks while Inner Sanctum takes a short vacation. We'll be back soon, so be sure to listen for that familiar creaking door. Oh, by the way, this month's Inner Sanctum mystery novel is The Motive by Evelyn Piper. Until we meet again, then. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Mm. Hello, this is Jimmy Stewart with a special kind of an invitation for you. It's to hear the premiere broadcast of the Hollywood Star Playhouse on Monday, April 24th. Gloom of Night is the title. I'm going to be in it. I think you're going to enjoy this new series of plays. They'll be written by Hollywood's leading writers. And this is Norman Brokenshire speaking for Bromo Seltzer, inviting you to tune in next week, same time, same station, when Bromo Seltzer will present, direct from Hollywood, that famous movie star Jimmy Stewart in an original mystery thriller entitled Gloom of Night. In this exciting story, Mr. Stewart plays a mail carrier who is also a tall storyteller, he matches wits with a murderer single-handed because no one will believe his warnings. Don't miss Jimmy Stewart in Gloom of Night, brought to you next Monday night on the premiere broadcast of Hollywood Star Playhouse by... This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.